Good afternoon. If the gentleman from Triad would sit down, we would begin the uh, July 5th meeting of the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust. Next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the June 21st, 2022 meeting. Any questions or comments? If not, is there a motion for approval? We have a motion to second. Please vote. And it passes unanimously. Item three is the consent docket. Number of items on the consent docket. Some agreements, some easements, um, deal with COTPA, kind of deal with the zoo. Are there any items on the consent docket that any of the trustees would like to pull for individual consideration? Seeing none, is there a motion for approval of the consent docket? A motion and second. And it passes unanimously. Item four is, is uh, the concurrence docket. There is one item on that docket and it does not include any awkward funds. Is there a motion to approve the concurrent docket? Please vote. Passes. Item five is an emergency contract which will take four affirmative vo votes for uh, its approval and has to do with an emergency out at the Draper Water Treatment Facility regarding some uh, underdrains that, that needed some work. Uh, Mr. Chairman, manager, would you fill us in on that? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have routinely uh, been taking a look at our filters out at Draper since last year when we had a failure. Uh, the, the filters are 15 to 20 years old and generally require some pretty good maintenance and repair during that time period. We noticed some uh, failures in some of the filters, uh, so we decided we'd go ahead and get some material in, um, expecting to maybe have some more of that throughout the entire 18 filter train. And to make sure that we got everything back up and running in a timely manner, I went ahead and declared an emergency to get a contractor in quickly to repair, repair those. We cannot take them all down at the same time, so as we take them down, we have the contractor ready to go to make those repairs. And it's uh, scheduled completion? And so with those filters down, what does that do to the capacity of Draper? We're able to treat right now about 120-ish. They've got two pinch points. Yes. Okay. Uh, other questions regarding the emergency contract? If not, is there a motion? We have a motion and a second. Please vote. And it is approved four to zero, so it passes. Next item is items for individual consideration. We have a presentation on the South Canadian wastewater treatment plant improvements. Mr. Chairman, Will Huggins is here to give us a presentation. Okay, awesome. Oh, good afternoon, Chairman and trustees. Uh, we're at a, an important milestone on the South Canadian wastewater treatment plant improvements project. Um, so we wanted to come before you, give you an update on the project, where we're at, and where we're headed. Um, so I'll kind of go over a few points. Main project drivers, this is a refresher um, on the project. We'll talk about current construction cost estimates in the market. We'll go over the bid results, talk about some value engineering efforts, and next steps forward. So um, some of y'all may know, but there's four main drivers. Um, the South Canadian Wastewater Treatment Plant, located in the southern part of the city, was built in 1986. A lot of the infrastructure is reaching the end of its useful life, um, requiring it to have a major overhaul in some capacity. On top of that, um, influent flows are reaching um, the capacity limits of the plant itself. 
So we need to plan ahead for future growth. Um, third component would be permit changes. There's a new discharge permit for South Canadian wastewater treatment plant, and the plant as it is uh, would be unable to meet those more stringent discharge requirements. And the fourth, just improving the overall um, operational effectiveness, effectiveness of the plant, which benefits the public and the environment in terms of discharge quality, and also will benefit our operation staff um, in the operation and maintenance of the plant. Um, as many of y'all may know, like it's a very challenging construction um, pricing market and bid market. So with that in mind, um, uh, we the engineering staff worked really closely with CPNY um, last fall as so we knew we were going to be approaching bid, bid date for this project to really identify critical risk factors, which was really raw commodities such as copper, stainless steel, and develop a, an estimating tool um, that CPNY has developed that allowed us to regularly update the OPCC to see how we're trending. So every two months, we, they would evaluate indexes, indices, see where we're at, and adjust the OPC as a result. So the slide here just kind of shows a timeline. You know, going into November 2021, we were around 155, which included a contingency. January, we saw a slight uptick. We were around 158. And then in March, we saw another up, bigger uptick, 176. Obviously, between January and March, um, we had the conflict in Ukraine start, which really destabilized pricing. Um, so we bid the project in, or advertised it in April received bids in late May, and the next slide will show the results. Um, so we had three bidders. Uh, Crossland Heavy Contractors was the low bid at a, just under $214 million. As you can see, the three bids are clustered together rather closely. There's about a six and a half inch, or six and a half percent spread between these bids. Um, unfortunately, obviously- Actually, 2%, a 2% differentiation between one and two. Oh, yeah, uh, between one and two, yeah. Um, so obviously, unfortunately, it came in higher than we were anticipating. Um, so CPMY, um, engineering staff, um, took a deep dive into the, into the opinion probable cost of PCC in comparison to the bids to try to identify where some of those um, cost escalations occur. One was we included an indexation clause just to um, share in contractor risk in, far, in terms of raw commodity pricing. That added 10 million. Uh, ongoing market changes going with electrical equipment, HVAC equipment, um, raw pipe material. We also saw an increase in a lot of our equipment pricing that we had been getting budgets since the fall and they continue to trend, it up, trend up and increased even more on bid day. Uh, we saw an increase in concrete or concrete pricing and there's some other miscellaneous items uh, that were counted for around $7 million. All in total, we were able to identify the, around a $36 million discrepancy, which accounts for the large difference. So now knowing kind of um, where we're at, and, but also knowing where we needed to go in terms of the Aquits available budget, um, we really uh, worked closely with CPNY um, for value engineering efforts. Uh, we also work with um, Cross and Heavy, the contractor. And, kind of honed in on three potential areas for VE, one being reduction of the indexation clause allowance. We found that a lot of um, equipment vendors and subcontractors were hesitant to participate uh, in that indexation clause, um, so the full 10 million wasn't required. Um, we also have uh, um, specification changes, which these would be um, material-based changes, maybe a slight change in the construction method that you still get the same functionality out of the design, you just realize some of the current market conditions that should lead to some cost savings. So one example um, that I noted was we had a lot of concrete paving. It's a more robust system, um, but we are gonna work to change to change some of that paving to asphalt and some of the lighter traffic areas and keep the heavier traffic areas, concrete paving, so uh, with delivery trucks. And then the third kind of component is process modifications. Those are slightly more complex, require ODQ approval. Um, but what we attempted to do was identify um, some features of the design that aren't necessarily needed present day, um, but we wanted to incorporate to truly plan for the future. But realizing to meet our budget, we needed to shift those into a later phase when market conditions are a little more favorable. Um, so that accounts for the, those process modifications. But the important part is we worked with CPNY 
and we can incorporate all these these features in at a later date just because we don't do them now doesn't mean we can't do them in the future so just to summarize um, the base bid award was um, close to 214 million dollars we've identified around 23.3 um, um, proposed credits in value engineering bringing the total proposed price um, for construction to um, 190.5 million dollars and kind of how we're going how we propose to get there um, we want to present um, to the trust for consideration is award construction um, today based on um, the base bid and then on August 2nd we would plan to bring you the first amendment change order capturing these value engineering um, components these would be this primarily the index clause and the specification based changes um, and then we would bring a second amendment and change order in October, uh, which would capture the process modifications. And we want to do that because we've talked with ODEQ, we have their preliminary approval on these process modifications, but we do have to submit updated plan specs and reports, and we don't want to finalize those contract changes until ODEQ has approved the, the modifications to the permit. So you're asking us to award the contract today for $213 million with the understanding that you will be bringing back changes in August and further changes in October with ultimately goal of getting the project cost down to about $190 million. Yes, sir. We're anticipating around 15 with the first change order amendment and then another eight using round numbers. I don't know if I've ever approved a $23 million deduct change order before. Have you ever approved a $213 million wastewater plant? No, I haven't done that either. <laughs> Are there any questions for Mr. Browning or Will or anyone in regard to this project? All right, is there a motion for approval? And the motion passes. Thank you. Any items from trustees this afternoon? Mr. Stone? Uh, had a good, you had a good weekend? Yes, sir. Didn't wreck? Didn't wreck. Excellent. General Manager reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have some, some pretty good news here. Uh, we're, we're working uh, towards a July 7th uh, revenue bond sale to refund our series 2013, 15, and 16 bonds that was previously approved on June 21st. The City Council approved uh, that action today. Uh, so on June 22nd, we met with the rating agencies to obtain ratings for the series 2022 taxable bond issuance. Uh, we received a AAA stable rating from both Standard & Poor's and Moody's. And to put that in perspective, only 7% of the municipal utilities are rated AAA by Standard & Poor's and only 5% by Moody's. Um, we did get some, some remarks from the rating agencies of some of the reasons why they believe we're AAA stable. One is. We're regional utility providers serving 1.4 million people in 18 surrounding communities, so we're very diversified. Uh, we have proactive financial and capital planning, and we have long-term water supply and, and very resilient systems, so they gave us very good marks. I would be happy to answer questions. Well, that's a really a big deal, particularly in a situation where we have such a large capital improvement program and with the volatile economy that we're in right now. I don't think there's, uh, well again, you, you ran out the numbers. I, I think it's something that, uh, it, it's great work by staff. and something that you should be proud of, both the trust and the city. Mr. Chairman, I would also applaud the trust because a lot of this um, discussion was around support from trust and council where you uh, have given them a lot of confidence in our ability to manage this very large financial commitment that we have put forth. So thank you very much for your support. Yeah, it's always a, I don't know, it's an acknowledgement from, from those who've been before, you know, the boards and the, 
and the council and all and the staff has been before have been working on this a long time to get to this place and then the staff now continuing the work so it really is a credit to everyone involved it's really good I, I have a quick question on the short-term ratings the a1 plus is that the highest short-term rating or why did they not do a triple-a on short-term on, on the on the commercial paper no sir that's the highest rating on the commercial Great. paper thank you any other questions is there a motion to receive the ratings report we don't need a motion i've advised very good <laughs> I'm not advised of any citizens to be heard. Uh, no further business before the trust, we are adjourned.